Camcorders are cameras that are purposefully made for video, but most of us just end up using hybrid cameras to do the same thing, and then we complain about the lack of video features. That makes sense, right? Why do we do it? Well, today let's compare two similarly priced high-end examples of these two kinds of cameras, the Sony NX80 versus the a7 III. You know what? Let's find out. What's up everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. This is actually a question I get asked all of the time. Should I get a camcorder or a more YouTube type camera? And until I got my hands on the NX80, I hadn't ever really given, you know, the new version of camcorders a shot. On paper, it should be the far superior option, but I don't like paper. So let's smash these two together until a definitive statement comes out. <laughs> We're not, they're too expensive to smash together. <laughs> it's a new year, so let's cover some new criteria for cameras. So there are now four criterias that have to be met for me to recommend them as an online content camera. It's honestly, it's mostly the same, but I wanna tell you a story about this camera. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start off with the video you see, both image and audio quality. Then we'll take a step back and talk about the physical camera that captured the image. What does it look like? What are its attributes? How easy is it to set up? Following that, we're gonna see how fiddly the camera body is to use after you hit record. And finally, what does the upgrade path slash ecosystem, you got the slash, slash ecosystem look like? So first up, video quality. Both of these cameras can record in up to 4K 30 frames per second and they can also record in up to 1080p at 120 frames per second with the full widths of their sensors. The a7 III has a 24 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor. I mean, that sensor is huge. I mean, it's bigger than some whole cameras. Like, it's gigantic. The NX80 has a smaller 14 megapixel one inch CMOS sensor, but don't, don't poo poo it yet. There are some serious benefits to having a smaller megapixel, smaller size sensor. Sounds crazy but we're not, it, it sounds crazy, but follow me here. When it comes to image quality, one of the huge benefits of the NX80 is the built-in ND filter it's rocking. I mean, this makes keeping the aperture wide open, they call it iris for camcorders, we gotta catch up with the lingo, while also not completely destroying your viewers' retinas with like the abundance of light, it's so much easier with that built-in ND. Yeah, both cameras have really good image quality. Now there are, I can't, I mean, there are some very big benefits of having a full frame sensor over the vastly smaller one inch sensor, but a lot of these are negated outdoors or in well-lit situations. That being said, it will be absolutely easier to put ND on the a7 III than it is to make the sensor on the NX80 bigger, because that's impossible. But if you aren't going for a super shallow depth of field or super low light shooting, I think a lot of the benefits from the larger sensor can be mitigated if you need a more versatile system. Again, there are some huge benefits of full frame video. There's no way around it. I'm definitely not arguing against it. I'm just saying that if you don't require that certain look or you don't want the extra logistics, I mean, these things are heavy and their lenses are even heavier. There are alternatives out there that can give you a better overall experience. I mean, right now we're recording on a Micro Four Thirds camera. I like... I like Micro Four Thirds. But don't take my word for it, let's hop outside to find out, can they vlog? <laughs> now the real question begins, can they vlog? We already, you know, we're trying to do our best to set this stuff up beforehand, because it's such a big pain in the butt uh, once you hit record to be like, oh, let's fiddle with all this stuff. We don't want to fiddle during videos, we just want to make it happen. So, vlogging test, begin. Whoa! Okay, so here's the vlogging test between the Sony a7 III and the Sony NX80. So it's the camcorder versus the full frame mirrorless. So I've got both set as wide open as they possibly can go. They're both 2.8, oddly enough. Uh, and I do have them ND'd to uh, all get out. I've got the a7 III with an external ND, with a screw on ND that's all the way up, and I've got the NX80 with its ND set to three. But yeah, this is the vlogging quality you could get out of both cameras. What's nice about the NX80? It's got great stabilization. And I can see what's going on with it. See, look. Whoop, you're not gonna see it that way. See, look. I can see the screen and I can know what's going on. With the a7 III, I have no idea. I don't even know if it's recording or not. Like, I have no idea that I'm just staring at a black box when it comes to the a7 III, hoping that it uh, is recording and everything's good. I don't actually know. The NX80, I know everything that's going on. I know my battery percentage. I know we're recording, I know the audio, I know everything about it which is just so great. The stabilization on the NX80, 
I find to be way better than the in-body stabilization on the a7 III. Maybe you can notice that right now a little bit. Now, in all fairness, I'm not using like a good vlogging lens for the a7 III, but it's the only lens I have. It's the Tamron 28 to 75, which actually at its widest is the same roughly equivalent zoom of the NX80. So they should be very, very equivalent. Let's push that out a little bit farther. So yeah, this is the vlogging quality you can expect out of both cameras. Man, I am exhausted right now. These things are heavy. The a7 III definitely feels way heavier than the uh, NX80. But I mean, again, full frame cameras have full frame lenses, which are very big. They both do have really good autofocus though, which is a very big benefit. And while I'm only using one microphone right now, uh, the preamps inside of the a7 III are also pretty darn good, but I see the camera shaking around a whole bunch. So I assume the stabilization is not having a good time right now. Okay. Before my arms fall off, woo, woo. <laughs> I guess I can actually use the ND filter to monitor what's going on with the Sony because I can see myself in it. Okay, vlogging test complete, back to the video. <clears throat> okay, and this is the indoor slash studio test of the two cameras. So this is the Sony NX80, and this obviously is the Sony a7 III. Now I tried to match these up, like I really tried to match them up as as closely as possible. I mean, it's really hard to get a full frame sensor to be more like a one inch sensor, especially in indoor stuff. I wanted zero gain, like no ISO on the NX80 because the second you start adding gain, you start adding a lot of noise to the image. I didn't want to do that indoor. So we're kind of having a struggle. I have this set to minus one EV. So I have the exposure set lower to try to match them all up because I have to have this light like set super high to, to let some light into this because it's set to f3.4 with this zoom in. But this is the image quality you can expect. You can tweak it to be a little bit better, but here are the main differences between the two. The audio's on my Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, just plugged straight into the Sony NX80. Again, it's just so much easier. I can monitor the audio levels, I can see everything. I know that the autofocus is working well because I can see that it's got my face tracking on the box in this. On the a7 III, I have a monitor set up and I hope that the face tracking has worked. Thanks to Jared Undone for showing us all how to make sure it works properly. It seriously has changed my life. Um, but I hope that it's working. I don't actually know, but it's just so much easier when you have everything all in one. The problem is, again, it's just so much easier to get a better image the larger sense you have, especially when you're indoors. But yeah, this is the image quality. Back to the video. <sighs> Okay, we've seen the image and the audio quality, so next up, how does the camera body hold up? Physically, both cameras feel great. I mean, for the roughly $2,000 asking price on each, I would certainly hope so, right? Now, we're not gonna go super in-depth on the specs. If you wanna see more in-depth videos, you can check out my review in progresses. Wow, I just, I just came up with that, but that's what we're gonna call them from now on, because I don't really consider myself a camera reviewer. I'm a reviewer in progress. And you can see those videos that I've done in the description below. The a7 III was my high-end camera choice of 2018. It's basically changed everything about what we expect from a camera at that price point. And it's so darn popular that I keep this around solely to make YouTube videos about it. Like, I'm not that big of a fan of the huge full-frame stuff but I keep this around basically just to make YouTube videos about it. It has a very durable feeling construction, and while it's not my favorite handling camera of all time, it actually feels pretty darn good in the hand. It runs with the ever popular E-mount for full frame, and quick benefit, it can also use APS-C lenses, which are much smaller. Some of my favorite physical features of the a7 III are the abundance of customizable buttons. These two on top, you know, being a particular favorite of mine. I also like that you can run the camera while having it charge its battery. Now that, I mean, that doesn't sound amazing, but that's a pretty oddly unique feature for a hybrid camera straight out of the box. Off of the top of my head, really, we're filming on the Panasonic G9 right now, and I think that's really the only other one that straight out of the box can do that. What they get right on the a7 III, they get really right. But what they get wrong, oh my, what they get wrong. Now this will probably be about my 15th time mentioning this, but I don't want the newcomers, if you're new to the channel, welcome. But if you're new here, I don't want you to think that I'm glossing over problems on the a7 III. These doors are the worst. They are the worst design ever. And I really hope when the a7S III comes out, they'll come out with a redesign of this because these just get in the way. They're terrible. They're the worst. They're, they're the worst. Now, when it comes to the NX80, my favorite physical aspects are for the all-in-one nature. I really like how there is an actual button for darn near every function you could want. Now, this will take some getting used to if you are coming from a mirrorless camera, but once you've got it going, it's great. I really like how the camera feels and being able to take it the full audio mode with the XLR ports on the handle or break it down to make it even smaller is incredible. 
Something I don't like on the physical body though is while they have three different buttons, while they have two different buttons for recording, there's only one, there's only one joystick that lets you maneuver through the menus. So let's talk about the menus. Sony gets a hard time for having their hybrid cameras have some pretty confusing menu systems. And maybe this is easier for someone that lives like, that lives with pro camcorders all the time. But this menu system is terrible and it took a long time for me to work my way through it. I've been using this for about three weeks now and again, I'm not a pro and I've only used this one specific camcorder but it took me about two to three weeks to figure out the menu system. It was a very jar, that was the most jarring part of the whole experience. But now we get into the most important part of this whole experience for me, fiddliness. So as we mentioned, we're kind of changing up how we view fiddliness. Now, really quickly before we hit, we're back. We used to talk about fiddliness in two parts, but the physical section covers the ease of use before hitting record, and fiddliness now covers the operation after hitting record. So back to you outside, Ted. Fiddliness. I'm gonna consider the physical body when we talk about it as a part of ease of use, like how easy is it to set the camera up. But fiddliness now is how easy is it to get the footage you want after you hit record, because you can take all the time in the world to set your camera up if you have that time, but once you hit record, like it's business time, like you gotta get the footage that you require after that. So how easy is it to get the footage you want out of the camera, hugely, hugely important. So when it comes to the NX80 and the a7 III, like how easy is it to get the footage you want after you hit record? Well, one of these cameras crushes the other one when it comes to fiddliness. Gee, I wonder which one it is. Is it the one with the great stabilization, the awesome autofocus, and the flip screen with all of the pro features in it? Or is it the one that doesn't have a flip screen, still has great autofocus, and uh, has gigantic lenses? Gee, I wonder. <laughs> so when I look at fiddliness, I look at two main things. We already mentioned you know, both of them, but it is autofocus, like how good is the autofocus? And two, are you able to monitor what you're doing without needing to bring external stuff? So like right now we're on the Canon M50, I don't need anything extra. I just have the camera, the lens, and that's it. I, oh, and the audio, I'm sorry. Audio is important too. Uh, so I have that, it's just a tiny setup by itself. I don't need anything else. If I wanna know what's going on with the a7 III, I'll need a monitor, and that means a lot of weight. And that means batteries and cables and blah, 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 blah. The NX80, again, has a flip screen. That flip screen shows me everything. It's just so unfiddly to use. Like, I love that. I love it. I love it. Every camera needs a flip screen, and you will win the fiddliness category here uh, straight up. Because as much as I like these cameras, and again, like we saw on Monday, I do like and still prefer a, like a mirrorless camera. Just give me a flip screen so I can see what's going on. Like, camcorders figured it out years ago. They're super easy to use. Give me the same thing, flip screen. Here's hoping, so I'm at CES, like right now as we're talking, I mean, not like right out here in the middle of this park, uh, but I'm physically, Gary physically is at CES right now, and hopefully at this point they have announced like the Sony a7000, you know, we can hope, with a flip screen. Okay, back to the video. <laughs> and we're back. So we've got an image, we know about the camera body, we know how easy it is to use, but if we wanna upgrade or get accessories, what does the ecosystem and upgrade path look like? Like most of the comparison, these are two separate kinds of cameras, so they will have very separate kinds of accessories. And let's be honest, like I said on Monday's video, the NX80 doesn't really have or need any accessories. Yeah, you can buy bigger batteries, you can buy a screw-on ND filter for the front filter thread, you know, maybe a cool shoulder holster, but what else would you really need? Like, what else do you want to add to this? It already has the XLR, it already has the ND, it already has the screen, and it already has stabilization. Like, seriously, like, that's not, uh, I'm not being facetious when I say that. Like, leave a comment below, like, what else you would add to this? Like, I'm very curious. The a7 III does have a lot more options when it comes to accessories, but it frankly needs it. XLR adapter, ND, lenses, cages. I mean, you can build it up and get some fantastic results, but that's gonna cost a hefty penny, both in actual money, size, and weight, and like, it's great, but so what, right? So am I gonna start recommending our new camcorder overlord? Well, no. While I do think the NX80 is an incredible piece of technology, I think its price is a tad too high for what you get for an online content creator. You could build up a similar system with the A6300 for much less, including monitor, audio, cage. The A7 III is also expensive, but I think it gives you more flexibility with lenses and the modularity of the cages these days that, you know, you can go from a simple kit of just the camera and the kit lens 
all the way up to a pretty serious rigged out system. And that's, I mean, I like having options like that myself personally, but honestly, both cameras are great and they both have benefits and friction points. But I will continue to recommend hybrid cameras over something like a camcorder until something new comes out and to change my mind. I will probably not recommend something as a main camera for somebody that has smaller than a micro four third sensor because it just, doing stuff indoors is so important to YouTubers and doing stuff with a camcorder, really you can't touch that gain too much or you start introducing a lot of noise. They're both great, but I like the hybrid cameras. Thanks for watching.